is frantic. The competition's fierce and tempers get hot. It's what short track racing under the lights is all about. And tonight, the ARCA Remax Series mixes it up on the half mile in Toledo. Frank Kimmel owns this place with eight wins. Can Kimmel repeat and move closer to clinching a record seventh series championship? The Hans Group 200 starts now. It's still officially summer, but there's a hint of fall in the air tonight in the Glass City. The ARCA Remax Series has come to Toledo, Ohio for round 19, the Hands Group 200. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen, alongside of Dan Partis. It was a gorgeous day here today, and an absolutely beautiful night for short track racing. Before we get interested into what's happening on the racetrack, let's take you downstairs, and with Don Radabaugh, introduce you to the man who will be starting on the pole tonight. Guys, David Reagan's day went from really bad to really good. His brakes locked up in practice, and he only got five laps of practice in. Then he turned around and won the Pork Pole Award. You're a third of the season so far, Mr. Reagan. Very impressive. Good start so far. But can you hold him off for 200 rounds? Yeah, so far, you know, the 13 Ford has uh, been very well, the minimum amount of laps we've had on the racetrack. But, uh, you know, that just shows, uh, you know, how much hard work goes into it at the race shop, uh, bringing these uh, Fords prepared very well. Um, got some pretty good cars behind me. But, uh, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, to run hard. And, uh, you know, try to lead a lot of laps and uh, don't make any mistakes, and uh, we'll come out of here the winner. All right, that's David Reagan chasing that Pork Chopper Award in 2005. Thanks, Don. The National Pork Board is going to give out a beautifully customized Harley Davidson motorcycle to the winner of the Pork Pole Award. Right now, Joey Miller leads the standings with five poles this season. Some of them have come on big tracks, some on short tracks like Berlin and Lake Erie. David Reagan's right in the mix with three poles, all of his on short tracks, the biggest track being Milwaukee, and then two poles each for Aaron Crocker and Kyle Chrislaw. Let's head downstairs now for the command to start engines. On behalf of the Hans Group, the Hans family, drivers, start your engines! are coming to life and we're getting close to the start here tonight of the Hans Group 200. And Dan Partis, this short track here in Toledo, almost a perfect racetrack for short track racing. It really is. As a driver, it's an awesome facility. A few laps into the race, probably some 20, 30 laps into the race, we'll get a second groove worked in the top side of this racetrack. A lot of grip in the racetrack, awesome facility. 35 cars will take the green flag tonight for 100 laps of racing. That's 200 laps around the half mile here. Pit window is 80 to 120 laps, so Dan, we should expect just one pit stop today. One, one pit stop is what it is here tonight. That's what it's going to take. Hey, you have to make the adjustments. You have to turn the screws the right way. You got one shot at it, so if you don't do it then, you may not have a contention to win here at Toledo. Outside of the series championship and the Port Pole Award, there is another title in the Arca Remax Series. It's the Bill France Triple Crown, and it all begins here this weekend in Toledo. Very diversified part of the Arca schedule. Exactly. Ralph, as a driver, this is awesome. We go from the half-mile asphalt tracks to the dirt to the mile-and-a-half super speedways, exceeding some 200-mile-an-hour. Just a great, great program, a great thing, that Bill France Triple Crown. We'll have highlights of DeCoin when we show you live coverage of the race next weekend from Chicagoland next Saturday afternoon here on Speed Channel. Well, let's head downstairs to introduce you to the other person who will be covering the action on pit lane for us tonight. Here's Wendy Venturini. Thanks, Ralph. I want to tell you about another guy to watch for in the field tonight. That's Brian Tyler. He starts on the out outside front row. Now, the last time we saw Brian, he was in victory lane on Speed Channel, but he was in a USAC Silver Crown car in Salem and Springfield. He recently got two USAC wins. He has plenty of open wheel experience, but tonight he's putting his asphalt experience to the test in the Arca Series. All right, Wendy, thanks. And let's take you through the grid for tonight's race where David Reagan starts on the pole next to the USAC standout, Brian Tyler. In fact, Brian right now third in the USAC Silver Crown points, trying to add that title to his two sprint car championships within the USAC series. Moving on back now to row number two. Chad McCombie and Joey Miller making up that row. Two youngsters 
Both with a lot of speed. McCuffey running the car that he ran with at Michigan, but feels it's pretty good. Joey Miller, hey, he's riding, you know, tailing Frank Kimmel all here all year. He's having a great year. Uh, he, he may be a real contender here tonight. Road three's got Michael Simcoe and Will Langhorn getting his first start of the year. Will having a great run here, driving some different types of cars. He really likes these stock cars. Andy Belmont and Justin Allgaier in row four. Justin's kind of had to put a bit of a Frankenstein together for his car, too. We'll tell you a little bit more about that as we get deeper into the race. And Bobby Dodder really didn't expect to have a good showing tonight. A lot of trouble during the day. Oh, you're exactly right. Had trouble with the old tank there during practice. Did not get virtually no practice. Had a great qualifying effort here. Roy Keselowski hasn't run with this too much, but has been very strong when he has. And Billy Venturini will be on the inside of row six alongside of Brett Hudson, who skipped school today to come running with us in the 62. Now, as we look back through the rest of the field, there's Frank Kimmel on the outside of the very next row, row number seven, and he's getting close down to that seventh championship with the Arca Remax Series. Pretty much sniff it from here, but it's not locked up just yet. No, we talked earlier, Frank's a wise racer. He looks at the big picture. He'll be real contender here tonight. He's going to be patient as he comes to the field. There's Mark Gibson on row 10 on the inside. Not the quali qualifying effort he'd like, but uh, unfortunately, say he'll be at the end. He'll be there before the night's over. Other big names in the field that have had good runs this year, Mike Harmon and Johnny Leonard, both in row 13. They've been on and on uh, near the front. Mike Garrity finished second at Michigan just a couple of weeks back uh, deep in the field. Jason Jarrett in a new car tonight all the way back in row 16 alongside fan favorite Daryl Basham, one of the nice guys in the sport. Handful of onboards for you tonight. Mike Garrity, who is sponsored by the Hands Group, will have this view from his Dodge. He's starting deep in the field in 28th tonight. And of course, the king, Frank Kimmel. In his advanced auto parts, pork back entry number 46 will start 14th. Start 14th, but he said, Dan, I've got a great race car and I'll be there at the end tonight. Can never count Frank Kimmel out. I don't care where he's starting in the field. Ken Weaver has a view for us as well. The driver out of Dallas, Texas. 15th when they were here in May, starting up around 13th tonight. There's Andy Belmont in the booty beer car. Uh, you know, he run really, really good in practice, qualified seventh here tonight. Another top ten start. Barry Owens has made a real, real, real improvement to that program. And he's going to start seventh here tonight. And Johnny Leonard will carry a camera for us as well. We'll have that one for you once we get racing. Well, let's head downstairs now to Don Radabaugh with a final thought. He just, Frank said he just wasn't fast enough tonight. Did, wasn't happy with that 14th qualifying effort. His brother Bill walked by and said, we're just going to have to shoot a little juice into the old man, get him to stand up the seat and tell him to pick it up. Well, so often, guys, it's always that old man that young guys are chasing most often in this ARCA Remax series. Frank Kimmel will make his 300th career start on the DeCoin Mile Dirt Monday afternoon. Wendy Venerini. Thanks. We want to update you on what's going on with car 25. Who's the driver this week? Well, it is Billy Venturini, my brother. He is back in the 25 car for the season. Now, Jason Jarrett, you will find him in the field, but due to lack of sponsorship funding, Billy is back in the 25 car for the remainder of the season. On the pit box now is Jeff McClure, crew chiefing for the 25. They brought back a very special car. It's only raced one other time this year, and that's when Billy ran it a few weeks ago at Lake Erie, and he finished second. This is one of Billy's favorite cars that he's rebuilt for 2005. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah, I spoke to Big Bill Venturini earlier today, and he said we just didn't have enough funding sponsorship-wise to run two cars. And the team has really been built around Billy, so naturally that was the direction they went. Yeah, and you know, talking about David Reagan sat on the pole here, he struggled so much here in practice, virtually no practice time on this racetrack, but you've got to owe it to that team. So confident in his team and his race car, he goes out there with virtually no laps on the racetrack because he had brake problems, he had a change of master cylinder, he works on the car, he dove in the race car, put that car on the pole. So great effort, great job done by David Reagan here tonight. Yeah, I watched him earlier today, upside down, hanging inside the car, ready to go, and getting that car set. We're going green here at Toledo. racetrack down there behind Michael Simcoe. Brian Tyler's in that white 48 on the outside trying to hold on to third but he's uh, real 
possibility of losing it, and he will to Michael Simcoe. The driver out of Clarkston, Michigan, in the black 45 moves in front of him to take over third. And now Joey Miller in the red nine moves up from fifth and begins to challenge, but he's got competition on the outside in that silver 44. Will Langhorn out of Washington, D.C., making his first appearance of the season. Will getting a little education here. He's, he's, he's mainly been an open-wheel driver, formerly 2,000, 3,000 driver in the 44 car, but he's got to learn. you got to get on the bottom of the racetrack. You've got to get some heat in them tires and give it a few laps before you try to get a little bit racy, but he's doing the right thing now. If he stays on the bottom of the racetrack in single file, that's where he needs to be. Well, he tucks in behind Joey Miller now, and he's got Andy Belmont moving in behind him at sixth and seventh position with the two of Justin Allgaier back in eighth. Back to the lead battle we go, and McCuffey starts to reel in David Reagan. Chad told me right before the start of this race, he's got a good race car, feels very good about it, just didn't get enough practice time in the machine, didn't get an opportunity to test it, said if they had, he says this thing would be a real bullet, and it looks like his car's handling better than David Reagan's right now. Reagan's car looks a little twitchy. Yeah, a little loose there off the corner, see a little smoke coming off the 11 car as he exits the corner, maybe a fender rub on that right rear tire, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. David may have set his car up a little bit loose for early in the run, but as the tires heat up, we'll pick up a push. You know, typically on a race car, a racetrack like this, as, as the night goes on, we pick up a push. You set the car up a little bit loose. Oh, well, whatever was smoking just broke on Chad McCombie's car. And he is in the wall. What a tough break for Chad McCombie. Wow. Looked like he had a, a, a tire rub is what it looked like there, Ralph. The tire was smoking, maybe going down. He was laying over on that right rear tire. That fender cut into that tire and just lost the right rear tire. Unfortunate for him because it looked like he had a really good race car here tonight. Off to, oh, and we got trouble over in turn two. The 34 of Daryl Basham is around. As of yet, he looks still unscathed, so if he can get back underway without uh, getting run into, he'll be in good condition. It doesn't look like he hit anything. Tough, tough break for uh, Chad McCumby. Man, he looks like he had a good race car, and uh, unfortunate that right rear was laying, laying down on that fender. Looked like just cut the, cut the fender. And while all this is going on, Brandon Nupp has looped it over in turn three as well. And whatever was wrong with McCombie's car just broke as he was coming out of four. Yeah, it looked like he, again, looked like he had a tire going down or he was cutting a tire and it just cut going down, you know, right down in the corner there and just nothing he can do. See, he drives down the corner of the bottom. Look like uh, you see smoke coming out of the right rear of that race car. Uh, unfortunately, maybe cutting a tire. Car looks a little loose there, but uh, I would say a fender was laying down on that tire and just cut that tire. See as he enters the corner. Well, there's that smoke. Yep, smoke. And there it goes. Yep, just laid down. Look, look like it may have been a right front tire, actually, because uh, when it laid down, it looked like it laid down right front. Hard to say, but unfortunate uh, for Chad McCombie tonight. He had a strong race car. And there's Brandon Nupp's car, as we told you, around over in turn three. Still don't know why he's facing the wrong direction, but all that happened after McCombie's spot. Stay with us. We'll be back for more after this. Welcome back to Toledo, Ohio. Toledo Speedway. Great night of short track racing here on Speed Channel with the ARCA Remax Series. And Daryl Basham was a part of the first caution, not the cause of it. That was really... The fact that Chad McCumbie had some mechanical problems and went into the into the wall. Now here's what happened to Basham's car, and around he goes. Yep. That's Mike Garrity that got into the back of him in the four car. Car just got stopped up in front of him. No one had nowhere to go, so he had got yeah. the back of 34 car. Looked like. Yeah, you can see McCumbie looked like going around on the outside. Everybody yeah. was backing up because of that. Daryl's got his car going again back underway no real damage to that car and Lucky you and i were talking about daryl earlier today he's such a joy to run into in the pit area always has a positive attitude a lot of fun stuff going on and a driver that's very good at taking care of his equipment and getting it to the finish yep daryl's been around a long time he's, he runs on a limited schedule limited budget so he takes care of his equipment knows what he has to do to be there at the end of the night wendy what can you tell us about the tire uh, on uh, mcgumby's car well as you can see the culprit was the right front tire he cut the right front tire going 
coming off of four. The toe is knocked out on Chad McCombie's car, and he has lost brakes. He's been having to pump his brakes to get him, and they do have a fender run rub. He's been down pit road three times now to get his car back out there. Of course, Chad McCombie is running for points this year in the ARCA series. If that tire's been cut on the inside of that tire, the way it looks, it looks like it may be rubbing a sway bar bolt. Well, we've got bolts that come into them, them sway bars that hold hold the sway bar on. And what it does, when you go down in the corner, the, the tire flex, when you go down in the corner, it actually moves in and it rubs the inside of the sway bar bolt. That's probably the smoke we were seeing, Ralph, on the inside of that tire. It may have been what cut that tire. It's one of those things, Dan, that you don't think the piece can get to the tire, but when you start into the corner and the weight starts moving around and the forces start coming into play, things move a lot farther than you think they can, and something as simple as a bolt like that can cut a tire. Oh, it's amazing, and we did not really realize that until we started putting cameras on these cars like at Martinsville on the, on the super speedways and stuff, and we've seen the tire flex. Back to green. Reagan got a good jump. That car looking really good here tonight. Looked a little uh, looks like Jason Jarrett yeah. there on the bottom side, bottom of the racetrack. Uh, hopefully he can get back around and get to pit road. That is Jason Jarrett's 23. He's off the racetrack, down on the pit lane, so we'll stay green. Fortunate for Jason, you know he was filling in for Billy Venturini. He's done a great job, and Billy and the team are real happy for Jason that uh, for what he's he's done for that team, and hopefully he can get a ride here going into next year. Back to Frank Kimmel on board the Advanced Auto Parts number 46. He's up to eighth position now. That's the thing. You can never count Kimmel out. He's very smart. He will take his time, pick his way through the field, running right behind the tent of Bobby Daughter. We told you earlier they had all kinds of issues with that car. Didn't think the tent was going to be able to run at all. But boy, not only did they get it put back together, they got it quick. No, he was way down on the practice sheet was, Bobby Daughter was, but they, they had an oil leak in the oil tank. There's a big seal that goes where these tanks go together, and they just kept pumping oil out on the racetrack. He said, Dan, I, we, you know, me and me, and you talked to him, Ralph. He said, I got virtually no practice. Not sure what the car's going to do in qualifying, but he went out and cut a lap. He's a veteran. He's got a lot of laps in race cars. He's been around a long time, almost as much as that Frank Kimmel has. And a lot of laps here for Bobby Daughter, uh, not only in ARCA, but in ASA and other divisions. And he did some testing in this 10 car. Oh, we got Mike Gary is around. Oh, he sees back in the way. Got the car turned back around. Not sure what happened there, but we'll possibly get another look at that. But Mike Garrity in the Hands Group car is back underway. Of course, Hands Group being the sponsor of this race tonight, the Hands Group 200. Uh, glad to see him back underway. Looks like the hood's bowed up a little bit there on the right. This is Mike Garrity's second trip to the Toledo Speedway. He doesn't have much short track experience. Big learning curve for him to go through today. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, and it's the first time he's been here with the Cunningham Racing Team, was here with a different team last year. It looked like the hood may be a little crinkled on that car. Here's an ins inside look at what happened. It's like he drives down the straightaway. That hood's already dinged up at that point. Ouch, 94 car. I'm in a little contact with a 94 car, and both of them cars get turned around. But That uh, was Randy Van Zandt, and I bet you the hood was bowed up when he got together with Basham yep, earlier. Exactly. So uh, Mike having a tough learning curve here tonight. Had a great run in Michigan, finished second. Now he's trying to figure out the short tracks. Stay with us. We're coming back to Toledo right after these words. Getting ready to go back to green here at Toledo Speedway. David Reagan getting a good start. He gets through the gearbox really well, and he's got his gear ratios worked out in that car. Uh, again, that being an ex-Robert Yates car, uh, he is the winner of what we call the Gong Show there in the Roush Racing, and uh, he's done a great job. Great, great future for that young man. Michael Simcoe runs in second in the 45. The 48 is Brian Tyler, who started second, still hanging on in the top five. And Brandon Knopp in that 96 is a lap down at this stage. See Simcoe a little bit loose off the corners there. May need to get a little bit of heat in that, them tires, but uh, coming off the turn two there, that last lap, he got extremely loose coming back off the corner. Brandon Up had gotten hit from behind earlier on, and he's actually three laps down at this point. It was a tough night early on for Brandon. 48 car there, Brian Tyler in the uh, Eagle Castle Winery Chevrolet doing a great job here tonight. Talked to Brian a while. I said, Brian, have you had trouble adapting to this race cars? He said, yes, I have. He said, Dan, I'm so used to driving open wheel cars and sprint cars. He said, I drive down in the corner too hard. Whoa. Whoa. Those two getting 
together. Miller gets him a little loose and tries to come up the inside and takes the spot away from Brian Tyler. Brian doing a great job of holding on to that race car, but you know he's so used to driving sideways in them open wheel cars, he's done a great job of staying in the gas and holding on to that car. And Will Langhorn comes up behind him in the 44, the Santa Tech Ford, and tries to see if he can get his nose up inside there as well. Brian looking like he's having a little trouble keeping that race car on the bottom of the racetrack right now, so possibly when they come in for pit stops later in the race, they can make some adjustments, but he does need to keep the 48 down on the bottom. You see everybody's rooting him out of the way and getting by him. Yeah, and here comes Langhorn to do the exact same thing. Up to the inside, side by side as they come up the corner, leaning on each other, and Langhorn takes the position away. You can move him up to fourth. And now Tyler drops back to fifth after beginning the night in second. Don Radabaugh with more on the troubles of Brian Tyler. Well, the car is really getting tight, and that's part of the problem with driving it like a 1,300-pound sprint car. He's driving it in too hard, too deep, and the nose wants to wash up the track. In fact, his crew chief rode on this glove right before the race, 3,400 pounds. Remember, this is a 3,400-pound stock car, and you have to treat it differently than a 1,300-pound sprint car. Brian Tyler is still getting used to this place. Remember, he was sixth here back in May, and of course, he finished second at Berlin. This is only his third stock car start. He'll run this same car under the coin mile of dirt Monday afternoon. Oh, and look at Joey Miller getting into the backside of the 45 car now. Michael Simcoe, this battle for second place, starting to heat up. Joey Miller getting hooked up a little bit later in the run here. At the beginning of the run, he kind of fell back there, especially on the start of the race. He fell back some three or four positions. But Joey's got some heat in the tires. Obviously, that car running a lot better. As you see, he drives off the corner. He's right on the back bumper of Simcoe there as he drives off the corner. See the flames coming out the right side of these cars when they get down in the corner. It's just the, the driver lets all the way out of the gas pedal. It pumps gas into the cylinder heads of these race cars. And then when they get back in the gas, it burns. It's pretty cool. And Dan Simcoe's taking a, a little bit of a different line through the corners. And it's starting to open up a bit to the bottom for Joey Miller. Miller's having a better time of keeping his car pinned to the bottom. See Simcoe drift up about half a lane. If he's not careful, that's all Joey Miller's going to need to get through there because he made that hole and that big work when he got around Brian Tyler. Oh, you're exactly right. Uh, you know, he's trying to stay on the bottom. He's trying his hardest. I'm sure the race car is just scooting the nose. You lose the nose of the race car in the center of the corner here. Oh, contact like that right there, there is going to open the door up, but another car in the way, the zero car of Tim Mitchell, oh. doesn't allow the opportunity for Joey Miller to come through. Yeah. They've got to clear him quickly. Joey had nowhere to go. Uh, Tim was on the inside groove there, but, you know, he did the right thing. He knows, he, again, he's running for the championship here. He's a smart racer, and every race he's getting smarter and smarter in that Matt Hagen's car. He knows what it takes to win a championship, and he's he's come a long way. Well, of course, he's battling with Frank Kimmel for that championship. Joey sits in third. Kimmel keeps creeping his way up through the field. Oh, he's up to sixth, and we've got another yellow. See, Joey back way out of throttle. Spoilers called him off, but... Uh, not really sure. Don't see any cars I spun around the on the I think the Ford racetrack. car was involved in it again. To be honest with you, Mike Garrity, I believe, was involved in that. Didn't see uh, what took place, but I did see him rolling very, very slowly just as the uh, yellow came out. So we'll try to sort that out, figure out why he was involved in it, and we'll be right back with that story and the green after this. to the 45 of Michael Simcoe. So put Miller in that red number nine up to second here at the Hams Group 200. And he's chasing David Reagan in the number 90, just in front of him, that other red car. Wow, Joey having a little trouble there on that restart. Man, it looked like they got a little log jam there coming off of turn four. And uh, could have been a near, near wreck there, but they all gathered it in and got back underway, just trying to get back by that lap traffic. Joey Miller in the Dodge trying to chase down the Ford driven by David Reagan. On board now with Ken Weaver. Weaver is up to 11th in the number 20. 
Kitten uh, been a real competitor here all year, just struggling just a little bit. He said, I don't know, we, I feel that we're off just a little bit, can't quite get a hold on it. As you see, he pulls up on the back of Mike Garrity in the four car, tries to work his way around them, but man, there's so much. Oh, there goes Garrity again. Boy, Mike is really having a tough night tonight. He gets loose saves at that time in traffic. That allowed Weaver to slide through. And Mike's wow. just trying to keep that four car headed in the right direction. Right now, he's running back in 25th. Now, here comes Joey Miller. He is caught up to David Reagan. They're working the backside of the 84. That would be Norm Benning. Joey's race car extremely strong here. It really is hooked up. Looks like it's flawless all the way through the corner. He can drive right down on the bottom. You see he's a whole car length down through the center as he throttles off the corner, passes by Ken Reagan down the back. Here he comes up the inside, and Norm Benning, a veteran driver, will do everything he can to get out of the way of the, race. the leaders coming through. You can be sure of that. Yep, need to run way out there by the wall, unfortunately. Oh, there's, no, well, there's no room for anybody in there. No. There too many cars in there, including Gibson's 59. But Miller's going to get the lead out of all that and get past Gibson, and now he'll probably slide by Benning here quickly. Yep, see Mark move to the high side of the racetrack, let these guys go by. He knows they're racing, they're racing hard. They got a lot better race car than him tonight. He did the right thing. See Joey just fighting to get around Norm Benning. Norm fighting for his lap. Does not want to lose that lap, but not what Joey Miller wants and to see. Yellow is out again. Spotters calm these guys down. Hey, yellow out, yellow Problem out, and get slowed down. One and two, and we've got a big mess over here. Wow. Now, three, four, five cars involved, including the 62 of Brett Hudson out of Owensboro, Kentucky. Looks, Looks like Mike so. Garrity's in there in the black four. Yeah, Mike's in the middle of it. The 08 of Bill Eversall out of Chelsea, Michigan. There's Bill's car. Seven car, Claire Zimmerman, he drives off. Looks like he's back underway. Just get down, just short track racing, guys. Just nowhere to go. There you see the zero car, Tim Mitchell. Yeah, Tim's in the middle of it as well. Nosed up against that wall. Nowhere to go there. Well, while they take care of their business cleaning up the mess, we'll take care of some of ours as well. Stay with us. We're coming back to Toledo right after this here on Speed Channel. Welcome back to Toledo Speedway, the Hans Group 200. We are under another caution period here. It's been a wild night so far uh, with 52 laps completed. Yeah, the guys getting a little loose on the top side of the racetrack, maybe getting a little high up on that high side. You get up there in them marbles, and man, you just, there's no grip up there. So you got to try and stay down on that bottom, bottom and a half groove, two grooves at the highest. A few guys spin out. Uh, Hopefully uh, everybody gets settled in here when we go green and uh, things will calm down a little for us. Well, yesterday here at Toledo Speedway, they held an ARCA Fan Fest to give back to the community to help raise some money for charity and to have a good time with the fans. Here's a look at what took place here. Yes, there was a lot of fun. As we said, a lot of the money raised for charity. <laughs> look at our old ARCA Don here. Thought wow. About a multi-talented guy. Hey, Jason, Jason Jarrett with Sharpie in hand. Yeah, I got one of them cars. Mike Erty's had a tough night, and he Easy. had a tough day yesterday. It all began with this sinking in the dunk tank. <laughs> Should have quit yesterday. Jared Havens got sunk, one of the ARCA officials. Don did his best to get Woo, dunked sexy. as well. And Mark Gundrum from ARCA went into the <laughs> tank as well. And watch this. Wendy Venerini. See you, brother. Sunker bro. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good job, Wendy. I'll be talking about that around the Thanksgiving table, I'm sure, later this year. That's right. There you see uh, the nine car, Joey Miller, really dominating this early in the game. And then the uh, 90 car, Reagan losing a little bit. Speed Channel supports the relief efforts along with the Gulf Coast for those affected by Hurricane Katrina. For those of you wanting to help out, you can contact the American Red Cross on their website at www.redcross.org or by phone at 1-800-435-7669. If you wish to donate to the Salvation Army, their website is www.salvationarmyusa.org. Their phone number for donations is 1-800-SAL-ARMY or 1-800-725-2769. And, of course, all of us give our thoughts and prayers to those affected by Hurricane Katrina. Stay with us. We'll be back for more from Toledo after this. Getting ready to go back to green is a pace truck, the big Dodge pace truck. SRT-10 pulls off, and we're back to green. See David Reagan working that 
outside there. He had a little trouble earlier when Joey Miller was walking away from him, keeping that car on the bottom of the racetrack. So we'll just have these tires have cooled down a little bit. He may have a little better grip, but I know he wants to come down pit road, make some adjustments to that 90 car that David's in and uh, make that car a little bit better. Past the one-quarter mark, scheduled for 200 laps. Frank Kimmel on board with him in the advanced auto parts. Horton back number 46, and Frank is up to fifth. Having a great, David Simcoe having a, excuse me, Michael Simcoe having a great run here tonight. His dad has one win in the ARCA series, been around racing a long time. He plans to run Chicago and Salem. He has a shop in Michigan, uh, Michael does. And they, they have a steel company, the family owns a steel company, and he's a crane operator in his own steel company. So he works during the week and also works on the race car. Michael Simcoe doing a great job here tonight at Toledo. And if you're a new viewer to the ARCA Remax series, as you said at the very beginning, we can't say enough how Frank Kibble is a big picture racer. Right now he sits in fifth position, battling for fourth, and trust us, he's going to do everything he can to get the win here tonight, but he's really chasing that seventh championship right now, tied for six titles with the great Iggy Katona. And here comes Frank to the inside of Simcoe. And this should just be a matter of time before he slides by. There he goes. Into fourth goes Kimmel. And that title right now is the most important thing to Frank Kimmel. It really is. And Frank's had eight wins at this racetrack, so he really does know how to get around the racetrack here. You look at Justin Allegaier drives right to the bottom of the racetrack, gets underneath Simcoe. Simcoe needs to keep that race car on the bottom, having a little bit of trouble losing the nose of that race car, so he'll have to make an adjustment his next pit stop. A lot of chatter on the radio about Justin Allgaier right now. Not so many people in the early stages of this race have with the way it felt like maybe he was a little too aggressive early on. No, he got into a couple guys there earlier. Of course, that's short track racing, but, you know, early on, you need to stay calm down. I'm sure a spotter was talking to him. Crew chief Larry Moore. Larry Moore. Two-time world of the world, Eldora race, big dirt race. Uh, Larry's been my crew chief for a while, so I'm sure they'll be talking to Justin. Justin doing a great job here tonight. There's a 38 car. Mike Harmon looks like getting turned around. Uh, he's back underway. Wow, a couple of other two, cars three. involved in it with him as well. The 64 machine is Josh Allison, and the 26 belongs to Brad Smith out of Belleville, Michigan. The cool map, Pontiac. Back so underway. the 64 gets going. Allison out of Martinsville, Indiana. The Lincoln Park Speedway Dodge. It's like everybody's got a little nose damage here tonight. Get in and uh, take a little hammer action to it, get them nose pulled out, put some tires on them, them race cars, and they can get back out there. Not sure how competitive they'll be here tonight. Jack up the right side of the car, get that tire pulled off. Usually you use a baseball bat to roll the fender out on that tire, Ralph. Um, they stick a baseball bat in there, lay the car down, and roll it around, but they're going to get in there and hammer it out first and see if they get it pulled out. Let's see if we can figure out what happened here. Started back in turn four. It's like the 94 turned around and uh, just a chain reaction. That's Randy Van Zandt. Randy was turned around there earlier, an earlier incident here tonight, but he's back underway. Randy's been in a couple incidents today, but uh, his car is still pretty clean. Yep, clean and blue. You want to say clean and green, but that one's clean and blue, but he's back underway. Randy back underway and um, hope uh, they get him down pit row, maybe make an adjustment, tighten that race car up. Is, uh, don't want to be loose here on the short tracks. Looks like maybe a little damage to the right side, but for the most part, the left side looked pretty good. Brad Smith, uh, looks like uh, That one little, might be done. Yeah, exactly. See the fluids leaking out of that car. He needs yeah, to get it back you, behind the wall. When you push it away and there's that big a puddle underneath the car, things are pretty much over. Yep, not a good thing. Takes a while to get that radiator changed out and uh, just lost the total aerodynamics of the nose of that car, so they'll be done for the night. Well, we got a little more work to do, too, in our commercial breaks, that is. So we'll do one now. Stay with us. We're coming back to Toledo right after these words. This could be a huge break in the night. As Joey Miller went to pit road, we go back to green, and he's going to get buried. Wow. Not sure they knew they were going green that lap. Joey Miller, Simcoe, and a few others come down pit row, and man, he just, he just made it out in front of the, the lead car. He's going to have to really know, but, pedal stay on that Dan, lead lap. When, when you see that you're going green next time by, why don't you just stay out? Well, you got to know those things, right? Isn't that part of the strategy? You 
need to be aware of. Yeah, most of the spotters, you know, tell your driver, hey, we're going green next time by. So I'm not sure what happened there. Possibly a little miscue there with Joey Miller and a few other teams come in. What had happened, folks, is they went one to go and a few fleet cars, Joey Miller included, came down pit road. So did David Reagan, did he not? David Reagan goes down pit lane, and I don't know where is yep, David. David Reagan. David Reagan's deep in the field now. Yep, but at least go. he's he's still on on the lead lap, working his way up through the field from. David's listed in 14th, but Joey Miller is listed in 17th, but he's got a long way to go. This is a great battle right here for the lead. Kimmel to the inside of Will Langhorn. Hey, Credit well, to Will Langhorn, Dan, for hanging on the way he is on the outside line. Uh, Will doing a great job here tonight. You know, he hasn't driven stock cars very much at all, and he said, man, these things are really cool to drive. And I said, well, dude, obviously you've been in some good race cars. He's a Lee Leslie prepared car. Lee's been around a long time. Knows how to set these race cars up. Brett Sherman drove that car last year. It's a great team. Lee's, Lee really knows what he's doing. So he's put some good race cars under him, and he's doing an awesome job here. The problem he has is he's stuck on the outside, and Frank will just wear you down. Yes, just like that, and take the lead eventually. He will. He needs to, he needs to follow Frank. Uh, you know, Frank's got a lot of experience. He's got eight wins on this racetrack. If Will would just fall in behind him, he's got a good race car. That's an ex-Jack Roush race car. He's got a good car underneath him, and uh, he'll be there towards the end. Jeff Collins, power underneath the hood. He's got a good package, and he's doing an awesome job here tonight. Again, he's got the education here in the ARCA series. It's his third ARCA start, and uh, he's doing an awesome job. Now, Justin Allgaier behind him in the red number two, and we talked about how Allgaier got a few of the drivers a little uptight early on with what they felt like was a little bit more aggressive driving than he needed to be doing that early in the race. So now you're closing in on the halfway point. Let's see how Allgaier handles this as he closes in on Wayhorn. Looks like Allgaier's a little bit quicker. He needs not to use the race car up. You know, it could be some 40 or 50 lap before we come in for for tires and fuel. Again, we can, we're at lap 80 right now. We can go to about lap 120 before we have to come in for fuel. So about another 40 laps at the most, you'll see these guys coming in. But I foresee a caution before that. So Allgaier just needs to get in line, hang out there. I don't think he's got what it takes right now to run with Joey, so uh, he has to be patient. All right, so here's the nine of Joey Miller, the last car on the lead lap, listed at 17th, the 13 and a half seconds behind our race leader, Frank Kimmel. Don, what happened to him? Well, believe it or not, they did not realize it was just one to go. They thought they had two laps to work with. They don't know why, but that's the way it was. They did change They did change four tires while they were here, and wouldn't you know it, they had trouble with the left rear tire getting it on, so it took even longer to get the nine car back out. Too bad, because the car needed no adjustments. It was absolutely perfect. Now they're in the hole. Wendy Venerini. This sport is a lot of monkey see, monkey do. David Reagan followed Joey Miller down pit road as we were going green. They realized the mistake they made because he's pitted in stall number one. So he came to a stop. The guys ran to the right side of the car and crew chief Tommy Perkins realized they were going green. He called off the pit stop. The guys ran back over to the left side of the car and David Reagan got back on the track. Unfortunately, he's fallen back to 12, but he does not have any fresh tires on his car. Dan, now you're stuck back there and you don't even have any good tires to come through the field with. No, he's, he's got to hang on. He's just got to be careful not to spin the car out. We're going to have a caution. The rest of this field will come down pit row. Frank Kimmel did not come in. Frank's leading the race right now. So when they go in the rotation, he'll be able to come in. He's, he's falling only back at 12, so he's not as bad a shape as Joey Miller. So he just has to be careful, take care of the car, and be there till they come in and make some tire well, changes. he's up to 11th right now with... Uh, Johnny Leonard in front of him in 10th, and he's got Ken Weaver behind him in the 20 car in 12th. Now, for Joey Miller, up to 15th, the good news is when everybody else pits, you don't really have to. You can stay out. Yeah, that may be a big benefit. Could be a turning point in the race. See Frank Kimmel as he works through traffic. He has to be so careful here. Again, he has to use patience, but he does have to be aggressive because the longer you get held up in traffic there, it could be devastating for him. So he has to really go. He has to be what I call aggressively patient. Well, when you've won six championships, you learn a little bit of that along the way. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. So Frank Kimmel continues to lead here in Toledo with 88 of 200 laps completed. Stay with us. We'll be back for more from Toledo. We're back to the action here at Toledo Speedway, and we're under our sixth caution of the night. Justin South has looped his machine, number 78, over in the third turn. 
Hooking it up to the hook, getting back underway. Just climbed out of the car. He appears to be okay. Pits are still closed. That's why uh, nobody uh, has come in yet. They should be open next time by. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I would think, Dan, that most of the top guys will probably take the opportunity now to come in. Yep, now it's time to go. 108 laps left in the race. They can make it to the end on fuel. I would say you're going to see the whole field come in for a final pit stop and the turn of the screw jack to uh, bring them into the end of the race. And what a break for Joey Miller. I mean, he no. should have ended up in a lap down. Instead, he's sitting in 14th and stands a chance of... Uh, picking up a lot of ground here. Yep, Joey does, but uh, the only thing is he's got a little bit of tire difference. He's got about 10 more laps on his tires than these guys will. That'd be the only downfall of his situation. All right, Wendy, what do you have for us? All right. The 44 of Will Langhorn started six. He's moved up to second, and he's learning from former champion Frank Kimmel from following him around this track here at Toledo. He is coming in for four tires. Four tires, no adjustments on Will. Don? Frank Kimmel's in two. He'll take four tires. He wants to loosen up that race car. Tracks tend to get tight at night, as you probably know. They'll make a track bar adjustment, some air pressure adjustments, too, to help loosen up the advanced auto parts support for And Frank Kimmel, the eight-time Toledo winner, is away. Small adjustment for uh, Frank, none for Langhorn. Is that just maybe the difference in experience? Frank knowing a little bit more about where the track's going to go and so forth? Yeah, I would say that. And again, Frank's got eight wins here. They've been to this racetrack a lot. Their setup has probably not changed much from year to year in the past couple years. They did change a tire a few years ago, but he knows this setup. You know, I heard him say he was put a pound in the right rear. I believe he loosened the car up just a little bit. But very, very minor adjustments to the 46 car, advanced auto parts car of Frank Kimmel. And Will still needs to know what these cars will do. He doesn't really know what an adjustment will help, how it will help him 10, 15 laps from now, and that sort of thing. Exactly right. Plus, he's running second, so he's probably pretty yeah. happy. Can't be all that bad, can it? Coming back to the action at the Hans Group 200 after these words. Not sure what that pit strategy was. Like we talked earlier, uh, there was one lap to go. These guys dove down pit road not knowing that uh, we were going going one lap to go. Andy Belmont has an onboard camera with us tonight in the Moody Beer Ford, and he's running in second right now, right behind Gerhard as we get set to go back to green. The Dodge pace truck pulls off, and we're back at it. Good single file restart here. That's what these guys really want. They want to get single file, get in line, give it a few laps, get some, get some heat in them tires, and then go to racing hard. The cross flags mean we're halfway home in this one. 100 laps left to go in the schedule 200, and Gerhardt oh. leads it, but he's having a little trouble getting past one of the slower cars. That's the 64 of Josh Allison, that red machine. See Andy Belmont right up under his bumper. Andy's been around a long time, a lot of... A lot of NASCAR starts, a lot of Arthur starts. He's he's also patient. There's see Joey Jeff, Miller. Jeff, he's Joey going. Miller on the outside for second. Gets around Belmont. Wow. And he's right up the backside now on Gerhardt. This is a really good race car Joey Miller's oh. got. Man, he's able to drive high, drive low, and uh, he's really, really got it nailed to the bottom. Well, Gerhardt's all over the racetrack, too, Dan. Trying to get that five car to do what he wants it to. Yep, not sure when uh, Bobby's taking tires yet. I think that's really what's helped him on that track. Is you see sparks come out the bottom of that race car. They run such soft springs here at Toledo when they drive down in the corner. Sometimes you lay down and hit the bottom of the cross member, and uh, Joey needs to tiptoe when he runs around the outside of Bobby there. Joey's got a pretty fast race car. If he can get a good run, he might be able to get far enough along the outside of Bobby that he won't be able to get to the back to the outside. Yeah, not yet. Man, Bobby's really doing a great job, and he's, you know, he's really holding his own. Unfortunately, he's running up on some lap traps. He needs to get by this guy, or he's really going to be clogged up here. Terry Jones in the 30, that white car with the yellow numbers. Moves up the racetrack there, and these uh, the leaders will file under the bottom side. That's really what needs to happen there, because the leaders do need the bottom of the racetrack to really, really get some fight. Don, what do you have for us in the five of Gerhardt? Well, we don't get to see Bobby on the short track too often, but he loves Toledo Speedway. He's been his third year, fourth, and fifth all season long. He's had to put the Hendrick Driver Development Program first. That would be driver Kyle Krisloff, but Kyle Krisloff not in the lineup tonight. Tonight, Bobby Gerhardt gets to come first. Caution on the speedway. What's going on, guys? Well, that's caution number seven. Don't see it yet. Oh, there it is, 64 car. 
Jeremy or Josh Allison, I should say. Yep, he uh, be two for him tonight. Unfortunately, uh, he's getting uh, he's getting his share of spin outs here. It looks like the right front damages that car, and uh, maybe he'll back underway. Don't not quite sure exactly how that happened, but. Well, it gives us an opportunity to take care of some more of our business, so we will do that. And when they're ready to go back to green, we'll be here for you live on Speed Channel. Joey Miller continues to lead right now. We've had five lead changes, seven cautions have knocked out about 36 laps of racing. But it's been pretty interesting so far. And just when you thought Joey Miller was going to get spun out by lousy pit strategy yep, it and works. getting hung out, it ends up not so bad. He doesn't go a lap down. He ends up leading now. Frank Kimmel sits in third. And it's shaping up down the road for maybe a Joey Miller and Frank Kimmel battle for the win here between the two chasing the championship. And you're on board with Kimmel's car right here. Kimmel's car just seems real consistent, real smooth, all the way up the bottom, bottom side of the racetrack, middle group, so I think he's got a really good race car. Here we go again. See Andy's car there on the outside just dancing around up there in that second and a half group. Oh! oh sliding through, Brandon up in the 96, and the 30 car. Terry Jones. Wow, Frank Kimmel just slipping by there, man, doing a great job running to the high side, really using his head, slowing the car down, but knowing that he does not really need to stop there, stands on the gas pedal and gets out of the way. Do not want to slow down and get run over in the back, because usually that's, a, that's the cause of the second accident after the first accident. That's caution number eight. See the 30 car back in the way. Looks like he just went and drove down there and got a little bit loose and um, couldn't really hang on to it right there in front of the Third, fourth, and fifth place cars. Man, that could have been real disastrous. Here's a look at what happened here. You see Simcoe and you see the 30 car just lose it all by himself. I mean, just uh, the car obviously being a little bit loose. He spins around. Did a good job, but uh, man, he spun right around to the bottom of the racetrack and could have taken out a few cars, but uh, good thing he went to the bottom. Terry see. finished uh, 25th here in the spring race, which Kenny Schrader won. Oh, you see Kimmel get in the back of Brandon Nupp, turn him around. Frank gets in the high side and again, when an accident happens like this as a driver, you have to get through it, but the first thing you have to do is just stand on the gas pedal and run wide open once you get through it because you'll get run over in the back. There's Kimmel's angle there. He sees the car get sideways. He's looking for which way to go. He picks the high line, and I think that was a smart move because 30 car really came back across the bottom of the racetrack. He would have been out for the night if he'd have gotten down to the bottom. Did a good job of steering around that. Well, one of the reasons why Frank Kimmel gets to be a six-time champion and possibly a seventh is that he finishes a lot of races, completes the majority of the laps, and, and you have to drive very, very smart to be able to do that. That's not just being fast, that's being very smart behind the wheel. That is, but unfortunately, you learn that by experience. Nobody can tell you. I mean, his father or anybody else can't say, here's what you have to do in these situations. You have to live through these situations, and it's really a split-second decision. Your mind tells you before you're before you even think about it, which way you go, and it's a really cool thing, but it just comes with experience. I mean, when we when we drive through a wreck like this, our, our, we do it automatic, so it's just something that we learn through time and experience. See Joey Miller, uh, man, his car looks really good. Again, he's able to keep that car down on the bottom and been really good on the restarts here, so he really does a great job. Wow, looks like he almost gets to the side of Simcoe there and uh, does not want to do that. He'll cave that fender in, that could be problems. Andy Belmont doing a great job sitting in second place. Yep, see Miller, just a great jump on the restart. 45 car Simcoe, a lap down, uh, trying to get that lap back. Unfortunately, he got a lap down in that uh, confusion there when they came down earlier. So uh, Joey Miller just stands on the gas pedal and walks away. Andy has one top 10 finish so far this year at ninth at Kansas. Let's see if we can uh, get a top five or another top 10 here tonight. They're all marked on the bottom. He watches Kimmel go by on the outside as you look from on board the Rudy Beer car. Wow. Looks like, you know, Frank did it right. He run on the outside, give, give Belmont the room that he needed, and passed him on the outside. Again, I think Frank's got a really good race car. Him and Joey Miller's cars are really flawless here tonight. 29 running pretty strong now. Brian Kozlowski. Yeah, Kozlowski doing a great, great job. Uh, qualified 10th here tonight. Uh, just doing a super job. 
Four top tens out of five starts this year for Brian Keselowski. Not a lot of starts, but pretty strong when he's there, and he's on his way to another one here tonight. Well, Keselowski, part of the racing family. His father's got 24 wins in the ARCA series, so Keselowski, you know, got some good tutoring, and his father's been around a long time, so a great racing family, and he's a great race car driver. With 81 laps to go, it's Joey Miller, your leader. Frank Kimmel runs in second. Keselowski sits in third. Andy Belmont pulls down the position in fourth. And in fifth, the 44 car, Will Langhorn, still hanging around the top five. Will doing a great job tonight. Man, Will's doing really good. I tell you, again, this is his third arc of start. The only thing I see Will doing wrong is he's running that high side a little bit more than he should, you know, and not knowing that you really need to keep these cars at the bottom. He'll learn that, though. It just takes time and experience, but he's, if the car's working really well there. But if he's not adjusting the car to get it to do that, he, maybe he just can't get it there yet. Maybe that's one of those things he's going to learn here tonight. Well, you're exactly right. And, and, and again, that comes with experience. He may know, not know that the car needs to really stay at the bottom of the racetrack so he can get that good bite off the corner. It's important to keep it at the bottom because if not, you stand on the gas pedal coming off the corner, you'll spin that rear tires of these race cars if you get it up in that second group. So you need to be down there on the bottom where Andy Belmont is to get that good run off the corner. Here he comes on the outside of Belmont. They're battling over position. This is a fight for fourth, and it looks like Langhorn's going to get it the hard way. Yeah, well, that was impressive. Yeah, it really was. He's running that outside, so he may have a race car here that, you know, is only one of the few, really, that can run on the outside of this racetrack. Well, but Brian Tyler's going to try it as well now. White 48, he's trying to get back into the top five, and he's going to go around the outside of Belmont. Now Elgar's coming with him in the two car. Brian Tyler in the 48 car, kind of out of pits sequence here. Uh, Ralph, he pitted on, like, right at right, lap 54, so uh, he's on a little different sequence than the rest of them. So, fortunately, we'll have to see what that does for him. Another car sneaking into this mix is the 25 of Billy Venturini. He is up to eighth, and he's right behind Algar, trying to get in there as well. Yep, There's Billy, Billy in that blue 25. Here he comes to the outside, and he's right behind Reagan. And Reagan's in here as well. Yep. So Reagan's battled his way back inside the top ten. Listed in seventh right now behind Allgaier. And then it's Belmont Venturini. Venturini back doing a great job. Great recovery for Billy Venturini. He finished second in Lake Erie this year in the Arca race. He loves these short tracks. I talked to Billy. He said, man, I love coming to Toledo. I want to win this race. I really, as a race car driver, he said, Dan, you know the confidence that you have in a track that you go and you really feel good about. You, it doesn't bother you at all. You can drive in the bottom, drive the top. He said, Toledo's one of them tracks. And he said, I, I believe I can win here tonight. One thing for sure about Billy Venturini, he's up on that wheel, giving it everything he's got, fighting to get his way up farther. Well, and a yellow flag now. Caution number nine. It looks like the three car of Billy Leslie is the reason for the yellow to come out. Speed Channel will be right back to the Toledo Speedway with more of the Hans Group 200 coming up. the lead comes down into turn three. Frank Kimmel right behind Joey Miller up the front straight away. Kimmel's got a real good car and I tell you these cars to me in my opinion look so evenly matched it's just Yellow. a matter of who gets the jump. Yellow is out again. Bobby Gerhardt is involved in the five car that's caution period number 10. Bobby's back underway he was leading this race here earlier but he was on old tires he had to come down pit road get a good set of tires and go back underway. He was leading the race, and he was holding his own there. So, unfortunate, he was a little bit out of rotation, had to come down pit road. Now he's spun off at turn four. Well, we'll take care of some more business and come back for more green flag racing when they're ready to go right here on Speed Channel. Top 14 on the lead lap as we go back to green. What Frank Kimmel wanted to see as he drives down in the corner, getting by that lap of traffic. As you hear a spotter, Larry Clemens, tell him clear low. As a driver, that's what you want. Good, clean racing room early on. Kimmel's car set up a little bit better with 60. 
62 to go. It does. Early in the run, it really looked like uh, Yellow. Joey Miller was bouncing around an awful lot. Caution number 11 comes out. Guys get slow down. Spotters tell these guys there to get is. the car woed down. Andy Belmont, who is on his way to his second top 10 finish of the year, was in ninth. Great He's run. Spun around. Andy was having in the booty beer car. Uh, unfortunate for Andy. He's really stepped that program up. Barry Owens, a chassis builder out of the Charlotte area, has done an awful lot for him. He says he's really helped his program. Ken Weaver giving us his view. No! Looks cool. like Ken got into him. A little touch and go. Looked like Andy slowed down a little bit. These cars in front of him may have slowed down. Andy got, got out of the gas, and uh, Ken just barely touched him. That's all it takes, really. Just a little love tap. But fortunate for Andy, he was not didn't make contact with the wall, he'd be back, back in the way, and hopefully he'll be okay. And we talk a lot about how on super speedways like Talladega coming up uh, a little later in the year, which you'll see here on Speed Channel, you really could just reach out your window with your finger and almost touch the other guy and push him around. Is it that light of a tap here in short track racing? Yeah, it is. If you're up in that, that groove and a half, the second groove, it is, but it's all about how good of a race car you really have. If you got a race car and it's really sticking to the racetrack, a good race car, when you get a race car a little bit sideways, you're able to drive out of that loose. But if the car's on the edge, it's a lot harder to do. So it's all about having a good machine underneath you. Don, what can you tell us about Brian Keselowski? Well, you guys talked about a two-car race. Not if you talk to Brian Keselowski. He says it's a three-car race. It's the best race car he's ever had at Toledo Speedway. He finished eighth here last year, and that was without the sway bar. He was involved in an accident. This is an ex-Hermie Sadler car. Hermie ran it at Martinsville way back in 19, or, uh, 2003. But what a family tradition. We know Bob won the championship here in 1989. They have a history here at Toledo Speedway. His father, Bob, was the late model champion in 1983. Brian, the driver here tonight, would duplicate that championship championship at Toledo 20 years later in 2003. Mother Kay Keselowski spotting above a great family tradition, not only at Toledo, but in the ARCA Remax series, guys. Well, it'll be great to see if he can uh, get in there and mix it up and maybe sneak one away from the two title contenders here live on Speed. Toledo Speedway here in the Glass City. Hands group 200. There goes the Dodge Pace truck. And we're set to go back to green with Joey Miller, Frank Kimmel, and Brian Keselowski, the top three. See the 45 car lap down a Simcoe. Well, Keselowski wants to fight for the win, but he got a horrible restart. And these two have already started to separate themselves. Kimmel, Kimmel drives down in the corner. He just gets up on the back of Joey Miller there. And it will loosen the car, but you have to get some inches away from the bumper to loosen these cars up on the short track. He knows Joey Miller is a little bit wiggly going down in the corner. As you can see on the end car, when we shoot shots of that, you see Joey bouncing around off a lot down there in corner entry. So Frank doing his darndest to get by him down there on the corner. I spent some time this afternoon talking to Kevin Sawinski, former ASA champion, who's kind of a driver coach with Joey Miller on this team. And he said one of the things that it's almost better for the team to take Joey to racetracks where he hasn't been in either an ASA car or a late model car because he really likes to feel that quick turning response that he had in that type of a race car. These ARCA cars, a little bit more slow. Joey kind of said, compared to that, it's like trying to turn the Titanic. It takes a little while to get that big ship to move around. He said, hopefully, I won't hit the iceberg here tonight, but it takes a little while to get this thing to do what I want it to do. Yeah, you're exactly right, Ralph. But what a lot of drivers do is we'll change the steering boxes in these cars to make them steer a lot faster so you don't have to turn the steering wheel as much. Oh, oh big trouble. Wow. There he slides into the top from the up. bottom. And that looks like the three-car Billy Leslie upstairs as we've got caution period 12. Man, these guys really been spinning around tonight, but luckily, fortunately for all them, not a whole lot of damage to these race cars. They're able to spin around and get the cars turned around. That's what's so great about Toledo Speedway. It's a real wide racetrack. It's some four to five grooves wide, actually. Lots of room when you spin down on the bottom. You don't get up in the wall. So, uh, you know, just an awesome racing facility. And luckily for these guys, as you see, uh, Garrity there is the third the or fourth the time he's been around in that Hans Group uh, car there. That's Brandon Nup's, Nup. Nup's car there in the 96. Yep, he'll get back in the way. He looks like he's just uh, waiting for Garrity to get out of the way so he can get spun around and uh, get turned around and get back in the way. Mike Garrity had a great run at Michigan. Finished second in that black number four. Almost uh, really had a shot of winning it. Chase Stephen Wallace for quite a while. And now here he is next you know, next Man. time out in the car. It, it just 
floundering around, but as we said at the beginning of the show, just does not have a whole lot of short track experience. Only his second time here, first time here with the Cunningham Motorsports operation. And, you know, these short tracks, they look so simple. You know, you know what? The speeds are down. It's, a, it's only a half mile. How tough can it be? Well, it could be very, very difficult. A lot of weight in these cars. They just don't stop real well. You see Garrity getting a little help from the back. Huh? Yeah. Fortunately, they just got slowed down, backed up behind them. Again, we've seen this two or three times tonight when the cars in front of them get slowed down. They have nowhere to go. They get tapped from the rear. Yeah, Ken Weaver got into the back. It looked like the three just couldn't see if somebody pushed him up there or not. No, it's kind of hard to tell, but... What's so tough is when, when you, and again, this is experience. You've seen it earlier with Frank Kimmel. When there's a wreck like this, you see him start to check up. Either one or two things. You need to get underneath the guy and get by him, or you need to stand on the gas and just get out of there as quick as you can because the worst, usually what will happen is one wreck will trigger another wreck, which you end up having two or three wrecks So because you get hit from the rear. So you need to get out of the way. Here's Justin Allgaier in the two car. Now, this is actually a, his dirt track car with the Speedway motor in it. Wendy, but he's he's having a pretty good run with this car. He sure is. Only 18 years old and making a sixth start this season. Now, he has had a best finish this year of second earlier at Springfield, so we know Justin can run up front. He was battling Brian Keselowski for fourth right there under those green flag laps. He has been happy with his car. They're reminding him to save his tires for the end. He has been real good, but a little tighter than his last set of tires, so Justin Algar is ready to go to the end. Talking to this this team before, they this car that they're in here today is really their super speedway car. And he not the super speedway, but a speedway car. And they, they brought the car that they wanted to bring had motor problems, and they could not bring the car that they really wanted to bring that he run so well here last time, so they ended up with this car. Obviously it's doing a great job for them. Back to green. restarts all night. Really has. We may notice that earlier. He's just really good on the restarts, but it seems like when we go green here early, Frank reels him in and gets right back on the bumper, but uh, on the long run, we'll just have to see if Joey is able to pull away from Frank. Here's that Joey's car is a little loose, but I think he likes driving like that. Like you talked, Ralph, he, he likes driving these cars. And he steers them pretty hard. You see the car just dancing around in the corner. A little bit on the loose side, but doesn't seem to be slowing Joey down much. Now, these two had a pretty good battle on another short track earlier this year. The short track at Lake Erie Speedway. And these two went toe-to-toe -to -toe there, and Kimmel ended up getting the win. Miller was in the fight for a while right at the end. Uh, Things kind of went away from him, however. Miller ended up finishing 28. Point battle between these guys. Uh, they've been tough competitors all year. Here's the points uh, as we stand today. And this isn't really going to help Joey out much. He needs to get the win and have Frank have some major trouble. That's the biggest problem when you're battling a guy like Frank Kimmel. He's so good at getting to the finish every week and putting in the laps and finishing up near the front. Even if he doesn't win, he's not too many spots behind you. Oh, you're exactly right. What he's going to have to do is he, he can hope that Frank has major troubles and gets knocked out of the race, and then he has a victory here. And it's going to take all three races to do that to catch Frank Kimmel here before the end of the season. Frank drive down the corner. It looks like Frank Scar has a little more grip down on the bottom. He's, he's able to stay right on that white line. As you see Joey's car just moving all around the racetrack. Joey looks loose everywhere. He looks loose on the way in. He looks loose on the way out. Not stable in the middle. And, of course, in all those positions, you can't get the braking. You can't get the car to turn, and then you can't get it to come off. So he's doing a great job of hanging on as a caution comes out again. Oh, no. The 44 car will... Will Langhorn having a great run here tonight. We were complimenting oh, him earlier. That's, that's too shame. unfortunate for him. Yeah, that's a real shame. Wow. He was on the lead lap inside the top 15, and now he's got body damage. We're coming right back. Observé comme la nature dans sa grande beauté a eu soin de mettre en chacun d'entre nous un grain de folie, donnant à l'homme plus de passion que de raison, afin que tout lui paraisse moins ennuyeux.
nouvelle Alpha 159 Berlin et Sportwagen. Faites votre choix lors du week-end découverte Alpha 159 du 17 au 19 mars. Marceau and Kay Whitehouse won the right to compete for the Motors TV racing team in the Trophy Ambrose at the Stade de France. Join the High Speed Television Network for a behind-the-scenes look at how they both got on against the very best in the very competitive sprint car class. Be sure not to miss the Motors TV racing team Andros program Friday, March 24th from 11.15 in the evening. Chief's pretty busy guys too, and the folks at SK Hand Tools have a trophy that they're handing out at the end of the 23 rounds of competition, and Bill Kimmel leads it right now over Mike Chaffee. Not surprised that those two are battling for the lead again here tonight with their drivers. Chaffee wrenches for Joey Miller, and Bill Kimmel turns it for his brother Frank, who's coming for the lead. Wow, look at Frank drive right out there on the bottom. He knows this opportunity, but he really needs to be on the bottom group, but his car fits so good, he's able to run out there on that second group. Well, he got a great jump, and oh. Joey Miller just oh. can't keep the car straight. Wow. Just can't get it to do what he needs it to do, and Kimmel drives by into the lead. Now, you're exactly right. We talked about that earlier. Joey's, Joey's car's been bouncing around an awful lot, and he really could have took Frank out there. He got underneath him, got under his left rear. Looks like he let out the gas. He did the right thing as a racer. These guys are running for championships, not just for one win here tonight. That contact there was not intentional. That was just Joey doing everything he could to hang on to the car. You're exactly right. He was bouncing around off a lot off earlier, so he really, really had his hands full. Now, Keselowski's in that 29. He's trying to come up through there as they work their way past the slower number 45. And here comes Allgaier in the two. And the 90 of David Reagan clawing his way back inside the top five. And Billy Vettorini in the six right behind him in the blue number 25 in sixth, I should say. Great battle here. You can throw a blanket over these three cars. Uh, Billy, I tell you, Billy's been charging to the front. They made some adjustments during an earlier pit stop, and his car really looks good. And again, he really likes this racetrack. Now, let's straighten up what you and I were talking about in the two car of Justin Allgaier, that red car with the yellow numerals. It's an old Speedway car that Justin has claimed to be his favorite dirt track car. So we were really both right in talking about this race car. And it's a car that he was hoping to crush the competition with at the coin on Monday. Unfortunately, as you said, they blew the motor in the car they had intended on running here. So they had to race this one. Yep, you're right. And he's going to lose his spot there in the car that was a track sat on the pole of the track record in Springfield just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Justin having a little trouble keeping that two car down on the bottom of the racetrack. Billy Venturini works his way on the bottom and uh, Justin turns down to the bottom, losing the nose of that race car again. A uh, common problem here on the short tracks. As the race goes on, the car gets tighter. You can't keep it down on the bottom of the racetrack. Let's head downstairs to Wendy Venturini. Go! Look! Oh! Trouble! The 45, Wendy Sorry is in the wall and we go to a caution number 14. And wow, with the 45 Simcoe. of Michael Simcoe into the wall. Tough break for Simcoe, having a great run here tonight after a fifth place qualifying effort. Just got loose out there on that outside, and uh, looks like it really knocked the nose of this car in. Not sure if he'll be able to get back underway. Looks like Justin gets a little loose driving down in the corner, and just enough to touch Simcoe, unfortunately. And, uh, well, Dan, we've got 29 laps to go. Some of these guys just getting to the worn-out portion of their tires now. Well, you're exactly right. You see Justin drive right to the bottom. Not 
able to keep that two car on the bottom of the racetrack. We were just talking about that, shoving the nose car, getting tighter late in the night, and uh, unfortunately got in the side of Simcoe, and he was just victim of the circumstance. Not intentional, I wouldn't think, but no. the old saying that eight tires do turn better than four. <laughs> You're exactly right. Use that outside guy as a bumper sometimes. Uh, unfortunate for him. Michael having a great run here tonight. Pull the fenders out on that car. Uh, not sure if they'll go back underway. They, they, I, don't, I don't believe they're running for points. They're just uh, probably the right thing to do is uh, put the car in the pits and just call it a night. Six lead changes tonight. Frank Kimmel has a top spot right now. Simcoe's best run of the season was just outside of the top ten with an 11th place finish right here at Toledo in the spring. Unfortunately, he's not going to repeat that. Half a lap before we go green here. Kimmel's car, just, just awesome this past 10, 15 laps. Joey Miller had the car to beat earlier here in the night, but Kimmel's car's really come to him. They made the right adjustments, and, man, I think he's really got the car to beat. There goes the Dodge SRT 10 pace truck to the infield, and Kimmel back rolling through the gears. Great restart from Frank Kimmel. Just what he wanted to see. Cleared that lap car on the bottom side. Now you can go to racing. 27 laps to go. This is exactly what he wants to see. It's time to tighten your belts and go racing. 27 to go. You need to get a good lead and just get out there and ride. And that's what Frank Kimmel's thinking right now. Frank has a lot of respect for Joey Miller. He knows he's a fast young driver and he's getting faster and faster every week. And Joey's car looks like it's a little bit better in the early stages of the run. He was pretty quick there. Yeah. The restart again. He's done that all night long. He's able, but he's really up on top of that wheel. Joey's been really bouncing around the bottom of the racetrack. And after, you know, about five or ten laps, it really put some heat in them tires. And unfortunately, not sure if he can stay with Frank Kimmel, but the car was, appeared to be a little bit looser than Frank's was earlier in the game. But he looks like early in this run, in this run right now, he's able to stay on the bottom of the racetrack and hang in there with Frank Kimmel. Unlike in big speedway racing, which we'll be doing next week live here on Speed Channel from Chicagoland with the ARCA Remax Series, where you need to kind of guide the car a little bit more, finesse the car on the steering wheel. Here, you need to get up on that wheel and make the car go where you want it to go. You got to, but you got to have a car under you when you jerk it left or jerk it right. As you've seen earlier, when Joey was turning the wheel to the left, the back would kick out, but he was able to drive the car and stay in the gas pedal. And it takes a good race car to be able to do that. Unfortunately, if you don't have a, a good race car that has good overall grip, you'll lose the tail of the race car and you'll spin out and wreck. So uh, well, and Joey's got a good car under him. And the other thing, you really have to do that aggressiveness with some of that finesse because if you don't, then you burn up what you have in your race car and you wear it out too soon. Yep, you're exactly right. You see the 29 car, Kozlowski, man, he's really charging the front also. Well, this is exactly what Brian Kozlowski wants to see. He wants to see Frank Kimmel and Joey Miller battle, get in each other, work sideways, get side by side because they have reeled the pack in. Then you see the 90 car, David Reagan, right behind him also. He has had a real strong car all night here also. The Lanier winner, the man who started on the pole here tonight in the 90, Wendy, is right back in the thick of this thing, sitting in fourth. He sure is. We know Kimmel and Miller are strong, but David Reagan in the 90, that's the same exact car that he won with at Lanier earlier this season. He told me he'd rather be at a short track any day than a super speedway. David Reagan is happy to be back on his roots, rough racing at the short track, and they've made very slight adjustments on that car, but unfortunately a miscue on pit road put him deep in the pack, and he's had a race his way all the way back to the front. He's got Keselowski in front of him and Billy Venturini right behind him. The 25 trying to get caught up there and to get into this group as well. Back to the front now with, Kez with Kimmel and Miller. Don, what do you have on the nine? Well, Ralph, the oh, car is working a lot better. We got problems, Don. Got, got it, Don. Oh, the 10 car. Bobby Donner lost the right front tire. Looks like tire went down. Whoa, it explodes into flames. Looks like an oil line's come loose underneath that race car. It's ignited. Bobby will stop that car and climb out of there. So you don't get any heat on the seat. See Boy. the ARC official running up there, getting Boy. Bobby out of the race car. Look at the trail of oil down pit row. Bobby has had such a tough day. As we talked about at the very beginning of the show, they didn't even think Pulling. they were going to get this thing ready to go racing. They're trying to get those flames out and then lift the hood. Maybe gasoline. He may have knocked the fuel line off that. What happens is when the right front tire explodes, that rubber goes all up underneath the hood, 
takes fuel line and oil lines with him. As you see, they pull Bobby Dodder out of the car. He appears to be okay. Um, unfortunate night for him. Like you said, Ralph, he had so much trouble in practice, had a leaky oil tank. They, they worked and worked, was able to fix the tank, had a great qualifying effort. Went out and qualified ninth here tonight, having a really good run. Uh, looks like he had a right front tire go down. You Rerun see Joey Miller slows because he sees what's happening in front of him. Yep, you see the casing of the tire coming off as it rolls down pit row there. It probably had already gone down and uh, just come off the rim. Then you see as, as, as stuff flies up underneath, it probably took a fuel line loose and ignited. Don? With Bobby Dodder, pretty scary ride down pit road. Are you okay? Yeah, I knew I had a tire going down for a while and should have came in, but kept hoping for a yellow. And we got a yellow, but it was a quickie. We didn't have time to come in, so just wiped out a car. But we're just having some fun. Just don't get to run much anymore. We haven't seen you around the circuit in a long, long time. What's your plan? Just this was a one-off deal. I just own a truck team and just, you know, mostly do owning on that. I don't get to drive much anymore, so this is just to have some fun. Glad you're here having fun tonight. That didn't look like a whole lot of fun to me. Of course, Bobby Dodder is the son of the late Bob Dodder, a three-time ARCA REMAX Series champion. Yeah, he had said that to us earlier today, that he thought this was going to be a fun day. It ended up being a whole lot of work and a little bit expensive. We're coming right back. and we're back racing here at Toledo Speedway with the Hands Group 200. Frank Kimmel leading Joey Miller with 11 to go. It'll be 10 laps left when we cross the line. Wow, it's not really what Frank Kimmel wanted to see. He started to stretch his lead out there on that last run. Looks like when Joey's tires heat up a little bit, he does get a little bit more wiggler, a little bit more looser, and Frank's able to drive away. But not what's happened so far here. Oh, contact. To go. Contact there. How anxious will Joey Miller get? I'd say he'd get real anxious. He's second in points. He wants to win the race here tonight. He knows all he has to do is get under there and rattle Frank Kimmel just to get by him, root him out of the way, and he, he can take his car in victory lane. So uh, it'll be real interesting. But look at the 29 car, Kozlowski and Reagan. Kozlowski's got nothing to lose and everything to gain by getting a Oh! He goes around. Reagan looked like got into the back of him. Caution number 15 comes out. Wow. Back underway. Looks like... Uh, Brian Kozlowski, tough break. It looked like I could see that coming. It looked like Brian got down in the corner. David drove in just a little bit deeper, just barely touched. So, so unfortunate for Brian Kozlowski this late in the race. Bigger problem for Frank Kimmel is that now seven left to go. Uh, he'll take another lap or two before we're ready to go back to green. Yep. And that allows those tires to stay better for Joey Miller. It won't be a long run to the finish here. No, oh, you're right. Wow. Like now, just slipped by there. Reagan yep. is dropped back to fifth according to scoring. Well, he pulled out of the throttle, I believe, and you see, and, the, uh, see yeah. the two car Justin on the bottom and there. The and the 25 beat him back of Bill, and Billy Venturini beat him back as well. Billy's up to third, Allgaier's up to fourth, and the 90s back to fifth and looking to get his spot back. But I got a funny feeling Billy ain't going to give it to him. <laughs> well, timing and scoring will work this out. As, as we know, we got we got computer loops all the way around this racetrack, and uh, when it goes caution, we, we're supposed to freeze the field, per se, is what we call it. And it's a gentleman's agreement. When the caution comes out, you, you get back in line where you stop. So uh, you see Bill Venturini pulling back in line behind David Reagan. It's going to get real interesting. I'll tell you, uh, Joey Miller looks like his car's really good, like we talked about, on the restarts when his tires are cooled down a little bit, even a little bit better than Frank Kimmel. So I, I look for maybe a little bumping and banging here on this restart because Joey knows if he can get around Frank Kimmel, he could, he's could he got a good chance yeah. to be in victory lane. And we're only going to have about four laps to go when this thing gets set to go back to green. All right, let's check in with uh, Don. Well, while we're doing that, let's check in with Bill Kimmel. Crew Chief, you had a pretty heated conversation with an official. What was that all about? Oh, nothing. I just... Oh, nothing at all. 
not near as fast as it was at Michigan Don, so. Okay, you, you, the car, you drove right around Joey Miller, now you can't drive away from him. What's going on? Well, it's getting toward the end of the race, and. Uh, He's just being careful, what? Just kind of make sure we keep it on the bottom and don't make that. Uh, Trying to make the advanced auto parts port forward just as wide as we can right now. So you can't go as fast as you want because you got to protect the bottom and you can't use up the straightaways. Can't use all the racetrack you want. We just uh, he might get someplace we don't want him to be right now. All right, well, I'm finally catching on here. That's Bill Kimball, brother and crew chief of Frank. Frank looking for win number nine at Toledo Speedway. Well, we talked about Billy Venturini who sits in fourth right now. Billy had that horrible wreck at Daytona the very beginning of the season. Missed quite a few races, didn't come back till Kentucky, and his best finish since coming back was a second at a track that he really enjoys, Lake Erie Speedway. He's a good short track racer. He's trying to make up for a lot of lost time, and another fine finish, uh, top three here tonight, would do a lot to help make up for what has been a terrible season when he came into the year thinking he was going to maybe contend for the championship. So I expect Billy to be uh, pretty aggressive here before this thing is done. And look, and he started 11th, dropped to 14th. He's currently up to 4th. He's, uh, you know, been pretty aggressive tonight, bouncing all over the board. He has bounced all around here tonight, but uh, doing a great job. And like, you're exactly right, Ralph. He is a great short tracker, and he enjoys these short tracks. Wendy? I was just going to add, Ralph, this is the same exact car that Billy ran with at Lake Erie, the only race that this car has run this season, and Billy finished second that night. He was super excited about getting back at a short track, and we know what kind of attitude he has at this type of place. He has felt really good since he's been back in the car. Just want to let all the fans out there know Billy has felt really good in the car this season, and he's very happy to be back in the number 25 for the rest of the year. That car right in front of him, David Reagan. David told me earlier today, too, that he feels like his career has really turned around by coming back to the ARCA series to a team that he has some good control over, is really able to communicate what he wants out of the setups, and that's why he's running so strong, and it's made a huge difference in where his career is going, and now he's one of the most sought-after young talents out there. Here we go, back to green, four to go. Kimmel with a huge wow. jump. Oh, a massive jump for Frank Kimmel. That's what Frank really, really needed here. A big jump because Joey Miller's been awesome on the restarts, and he's really been able to drive up underneath him. But you see Joey drives a breakdown in the corner. Miller gets right into the back of Kimmel. Jumps yep. into it. Oh! He gets into Miller, and Miller goes around on the front stretch. Wow. We stay green and keep going. Yep. Oh, that is a horrible break for Joey Miller. Tough break for Miller. Looks like David Reagan just got in the back of Nothing nowhere he can really go. Now back up to the front of the battle. Here they come. And look at Allgaier and Venturini side by side as we come racing through the smoke. Frank Kimmel has one to go. And here comes David Reagan who started on the pole. Oh, he the back in the back of him. Kimmel. And then to the touch. bottom. Here comes Reagan to the bottle and Kimmel goes right to the grass. Wow. And here comes Billy. But the yellow is out. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. No checkered flag here. Looks like we're going to go green. Green, white, checkered. Yes, sir. Or green, wow. checkered, whichever way they decide to go. And if you thought Bill Kimball was hot before, my guess is he's going to be <laughs> furious with the officials now. Yes, he is. There's a lot of hot drivers out here. Joey Miller, I'm sure he's Oh, look happy. at this. Kimball drives Reagan right up the racetrack. All wow. right. Now, watch this as we go back. All right, first bit, Reagan into Kimmel. Great job by Frank to save it, but watch Frank drive him right to the grass. Oh, man. man. Right down the bottom, Frank says, I don't like that. Billy says, there's a hole. He Look at the yellow light. Goes. Yellow lights were on right there. You saw him in turn two. Yep. Billy came through, unfortunately, or turn three, I should say. Unfortunately, Billy doesn't get the lead. He goes back to third. That's what I would say. And Joey Miller, by the way, scored in 10th. See Reagan uh, up along Frank Kimmel just to have a little uh, little talk, I'm sure. Not a... All right. It's going to be a... That's Frank two laps. Kimmel. It's going to be two laps, green and white at the same time. Green, then the white. Radio communications with Larry Clements and uh, Frank Kimmel. Uh, Frank says it should be one. He says, no, it's going to be two. The green and then the white. See David Reagan up front. He says, this is my spot. So I'm sure NASCAR, I mean, Ark, excuse me, uh, talking like, to these, these teams, telling them uh, where to be. Looked like Kimmel had his hand out the window, like uh, he might have been a little frustrated with the officials. Instead of getting the green and the white, he just wanted the white. 
Yep, see the left front fender really beat in on Frank's car. Um, so it looks like Kimmel's going to get his wish. It looks like it's going to be a green and white now. We're hearing a revision from the ARCA officials. Apparently they were still looking at it. So it'll be a green-white and then the checkered at the completion of that lap. Bill Kimmel is not happy, I'm sure. Two weeks in a row at, at uh, Michigan, he was not happy with ARCA wow. and here tonight. But and man, what is this? This has been a great finish. And uh, Well, I'll tell you what. Every young kid in that field threw something at Frank Kimmel there. <laughs> and the, the veteran yep. fought him off hard and valiantly and holds on to the lead, but he's going to have to do it again. Because my guess is David Reagan and Billy Venturini and Allgaier are not going to back off with this thing. And it's going to be pretty physical to the finish. I mean, what the heck? You beat on him this bad. You might as well beat on him a little bit more, right? Well, you're exactly right. And, uh, you know, last lap, they're coming for the, you know, white flag and uh, checkered flag. And, you know, he says, what the heck? I'll lean on him. I could uh, get him slowed down and then beat him to the checkered. Now, the pace truck lights are turned off. We saw a lot of rubbing and a lot of beating and banging. Do you think everybody's cars are okay? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Frank Kimmel's left front fender is beat in, but fortunately when we go down in the corner, the left, left side of the race car lifts up, so he, it shouldn't be pushing too hard down on there, and if it is, he can live with uh, some smoke. And also, you look at the left front of David Reagan's fender, it's beat in. The right front's beat in. All, all four corners of that car beat in. Billy Venturini, his car is good. Going to be interesting. Jason Allegaier there in fourth place. Uh, Jason having a great run here tonight. If this happens again, if these two guys get together again, then, they, you know, Billy Venturini could be the... The big green benefit. and white around. Here we go. It's a one-lap shootout. Reagan can't catch Kimmel off the line. Can he run him deep into three? He's on his backside. He'll have Not to close it. enough. Coming off the turn four. Reagan still tries to get inside. Oh, he looks to the bottom. Can't get there. Oh. And Frank Kimmel gets the win. It's a drag race. Great finish. Awesome. Well, that'll appease a few things with Frank Kimmel, but probably not enough. Bill Kimmel not real sure looking up at the up at the start and finish line saying, did we win? Did we win? The electronic scoring shows Frank Kimmel wins at the line. Kimmel, Reagan, Venturini, Allgaier, and Weaver listed as the top five. Joey Miller credited with eighth. We're coming back. Whoa, turn around here, young man. Well, they called you old man earlier, hey, but I didn't believe any of that. 63 career wins for you, win number nine at Toledo. Very exciting race in the end from a fan's perspective. How was it from your angle? Well, it, it's just terrible that these kids, you know, everybody talks about young kids and everything, but he knocks you sideways coming off the turn, then he drives down your side and he rakes the whole side of the car. You know, I don't call that racing. Joey and I had a great race. I, mean, I don't think we touched each other all night. Passed him clean on the outside. He treated me good. That's what I call racing. That stuff is going on at the end. I don't like it all. And uh, it's just a bad deal. But uh, this Advanced Auto Parts Ford Taurus was bad fast today. And got to thank all the port crew. Really worked hard today. How about that finish? He crawled up right underneath you there at the end. Nonetheless, you're the winner. How was it for you? Well, I, I looked up and saw the checkered coming. And uh, I just, uh, I knew all I had to do was beat him back to the line. And uh, I didn't know what he was doing. I figured he'd run over me again. So I didn't want to take a chance. Well, the chance that Kimmel would get his ninth win has come true. Frank Kimmel, a winner again at Toledo Speedway. Wow. Yeah, there's been a lot of tension down after this one. A lot of folks frustrated and Frank Kimmel happy, but you can hear the frustration in him as well. A very, very aggressive short track, but you know what? That's why everybody loves short watching short track racing. racing. Now here's the results. Kimmel, Rankin, Billy Venturini. Wow, great run. finish. Justin Allgaier, awesome finish for him. Look at Kevin Weaver. And Brian Tyler, what a great night yep. he had. Kozolowski, awesome finish for him. There's Bobby Gearhart in 11th. He led the race for a while. Very frustrated in this one was was uh, Bobby Gearhart. <laughs> yeah. Michael Simcoe bounced back after a tough night. Yep. Randy Van Zant back there. Mike Garrity. I almost ended up with the top 20, did Mike Garrity. That's just a persistence yep. of continuing to run. Wendy. 
I have second place and third place, David Reagan and my brother Billy Venturi. Now, first of all, David, what a crazy finish. Did you think you were going to get a second chance? Oh, I, you know, I did get a second chance. You know, uh, Frank was holding me down a little bit on those last few laps. Uh, you know, we're happy to finish second, but we're uh, disappointed not to win. I think we had one of the cars to beat. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, hard racing there at the end. Obviously, the number nine was fast, but... Uh, you know, uh, you know, ha happy for Frank in one essence, but you know, uh, disappointed in us. We uh, had a car to win. We uh, messed up on pit strategy, but uh, you know, good night. We're uh, we're happy. We're carrying a little momentum to the uh, dirt track on Monday. All right, good run for you. Now, Billy Venturini, he was almost celebrating a win in his car because this has happened twice to you at this very track. I guess there's like a conspiracy theory for me not to win. I won the race. I mean, there was no reason to throw a caution. I guess I, I haven't figured it out. Kimmel must have Ark in the pocket or something or Parker. I don't know. There's some kind of deal going on there. But either way, the team did a great job. Qualified lousy came back from that i thought we won the race but heck i think i've won here twice and they got one to show for it so uh i haven't figured it out all i know is my team did a good job thank my sponsors mc sports uh central merchant services readyhosting.com fricky's an awesome guy uh just my whole crew i love it and wendy you did a hell of a job too today well thanks bro you did a good job too and let's throw it back up to the booth because it's time to go off air that it is and tommy perkins gets the sk crew chief of the race award the crew chief of the number 90 of David Reagan. Of course, they sat on the pole and came back to finish second. It's a combination Outstanding of all those night things for them guys. that uh, decides who wins that award each race. And Tommy certainly did an outstanding job here today. Lots of tempers. Tempers flaring down there that we didn't see. Wow, Man, there were wow. a lot of hot drivers here at Toledo. Wild night. But Frank Kimmel takes another step towards his seventh championship. You'll see another round with the Arca Remax Series from Chicagoland Speedway next weekend. Live here on Speed. Make sure you join us for Wendy Vinton. Dreamy and Don Redabaugh, my pal Dan Pardis. I'm Ralph Sheehan. Thanks for joining us for a great night of short track racing from Toledo, where Frank Kimmel has won his ninth race.